other new additions to talk about first of all then we've just been speaking to uh, to Matt Lowton what are you hoping that he's going to bring to Huddersfield Town? Yeah listen Matt is a fantastic boy um, he's played at the top end of the championship and premiership for a number of years now and he's going to bring in a real wealth of experience um, he's a very flexible player he could play both full back positions he could play both wing back positions and he could also play in a defensive midfield role as well. And these players are really valuable to the squad. I just feel he's the type of guy that we need in the building because we've got a lot of uh, young developing players. And as you're going through this process, there's nothing better than looking at these experienced players that have been at the top level to see how they go about their business and training, what their daily habits are, what their daily rituals are, you know. And, and, this, and he's already set the standard really well in training in the past week. He's talked about rediscovering his love of football again. It sounds like he's had quite a difficult few months at Burnley. Have you seen that in him that he maybe needs a bit of an arm around him to, to get him back and enjoying his game again? No, not at all. It's just the case of um, it's a player that I really admire. I, I played against him as well when I was in England when he was a young player at Sheffield United. Um, he's been involved in some very big clubs throughout his career. And uh, for me, it's all about Matthew just getting back to where he was at in terms of his fitness levels. And it's very clear and evident for everyone to see how how much of a, an accomplished footballer he is. Is he ready to go this weekend? Yeah, he'll definitely be involved. The other new addition finally confirmed yesterday was that Florian Camberry's got his international clearance. So again, just talk to us a little bit about him and what you're hoping he'll bring. Florian's a very interesting player. He was a guy that we brought on board at Karlsruhe in the Bundesliga out there as a young lad from Grasshopper Zurich and I followed his career uh, throughout. You know, he come over to Scotland and had periods at uh, two massive clubs in Hibs and Rangers and then uh, he went back to Switzerland and, and played out there as well in the Swiss Super League. Um, and of course, of late, he was uh, had a period in at Sheffield Wednesday as well. So, He's had a taste of English football and this is a, a step up for him. He's a player that's uh, creative, he could score goals and uh, he's, a, he's a guy that will add to the squad. Is he a bit different to the strikers you've already got in the building? Yeah, he's a, he's a player that likes to come and link the play. He's a lad that loves to run deep as well. Um, and then when he's up to speed, you know, he's a guy that will press well defensively from our structure. So we're really happy to have him. He's a, he's a good pro as well and... Uh, the, the groups welcomed him in really well um, and he integrated really well out in Marbella as well at the training camp. And that was the key for us as well, to get him up to speed by using the, the training sessions there. And he took on everything on board and uh, he, 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 he's, he looks like he, he, he's kind of come into the group really well, you know. Wanted to ask you about Kyle Hudlin, who's come back from his loan spell at Wimbledon. Is he back to stay at Huddersfield or is he back with a view to maybe another loan somewhere else? No, I think for Kyle, it's good to come back to his parent club. And uh, like early in the week, we, we're a, a, t a team who introduce a lot of our uh, younger players and uh, we monitor them, assess them and see how they go. And Kyle's a boy who's got uh, extremes, you know, there's nothing like him in the league. He's very tall, he's got good presence um, and he's developing. And I feel that being in the building here and training with our first team players will be really good for he, his overall development. Yeah, how close is he to maybe being involved with the first team a bit more then? Yeah, we just assess that as it goes, you know, and, and judge him on the training and how his performance levels are. Um, but what I would say is he's very engaged. Um, he's a good lad. He's He's got a lot of good principles and um, he's, he's here to work hard and he's made that clear, you know, and he's been training with the B team at the moment, which is a really strong group and they've got a lot of young, talented players there. And it's also good for our young players because they'll have not, uh, come up against a player with his physicality and presence before. And just on the transfer window, should we expect any more comings or goings over the next 24, 48 hours? Um, regards to January, I just don't want to speculate on it. Um, our full, full focus at the moment is on what we have in the building. We've got some really good players, experienced ones and younger ones that are developing and they've done ever so well. I think the icing would have been on the cake if we'd beat Luton um, and got three wins in a row and that's the next barrier we'll have to break down we've done back to backs now for the first time this season we have to focus on now going on a run getting three in a row getting four in a row and so on and please believe me 
Um, we've got a big determination as a group to go and make that happen. And we're focused, we're, we're determined, um, and we're also looking forward to this great game and a prestigious cup this weekend. Well, I was going to say about the FA Cup, in some ways, are you, it, is it come at a good time or a bad time when you're wanting to kind of set right some of the things that you were frustrated by in the game against Luton? I just feel the FA Cup's just an amazing uh, cup, um, very prestigious cup. It's a cup that when you're a young player, you always dream of playing in. I was very fortunate that I played in it myself. Um, it meant a lot to me and I always used to enjoy it. And there's a very special feeling in the air. And our uh, young players and older players have just got to go out and embrace that this weekend. We're playing against a very tough opponent. Opponent, They're a very settled side. They've got a really good young manager. He's experienced and, and done many things in the, in the leagues here in England. And he's built a very good side there and we respect him. It, it, from your experience in the FA Cup as a player then, were there any particularly notable matches that you played in? Were you involved in any giant killings, that kind of thing? No, not at all. I mean, probably the one that stood out most was going down to Stamford Bridge and playing against the Mourinho's team with Norwich. And uh, I think I've played against many good players in my career in Germany and in England. But I think on that day, probably someone that would have went under the radar and I think probably Michael Essien is probably one of the best players I've ever played against. And I've played against guys like Modric, Patrick Vieira and so on. But for me, he's, he's probably the best player I've ever played against as a midfielder, you know. And did you get an opportunity to speak to Mourinho much that day? No, he was great. He'd come off and shake all, all our hands, but that was his uh, trademark, you know. He used to wait in the tunnel and uh, kind of greet all the players from the opposition. And he's a very special man. I uh, was very lucky that he was on our pro license as well. And just to listen to him and his stories and his experiences was incredible. And he's a, he's a very special coach. The FA Cup, the magic of the FA Cup that people talk about is always about those David and uh, Goliath clashes where teams can really upset the odds. It's not the case for you, is it, this weekend? Because it's Preston who are in the same division, a team that you've already played three times this year. You know, is it, is it hard to kind of get that same sense of excitement, that same kind of spark about it when it's maybe not quite such a, an exciting tie as you might have liked? No, there's been a real excitement about the push this week because um, our lads are very deflated after uh, our game at the weekend and they want to put it to right. And this is a great uh, opportunity for us, you know. We we will probably freshen up the, the, the squad, most likely, because there's been a lot of games there over the Christmas and New Year period, and we have to utilise our squad. We're also a club that want to develop young players. For me, as a head coach, it's not about what's happening now, it's about what's happening in 18 months' time. I want to grow with these players, and these players will develop very fast, but they have to answer the questions asked of them. And there'll be no better test here at the weekend against a very strong, settled Preston side. I suppose the difficulty with that is that you're wanting to balance giving young players those opportunities, but that comes with a risk that it might not pay off on the day and you know you exit the cup at, at the first hurdle. So how do you balance that that risk with giving players those opportunities? I think it just goes down to analysing the squad and looking at who's fatigued and it's normal that you have players that are shown fatigue in this period because they've played three games in quick succession and we've got a lot of players there that are pushing for their chance that have been on the periphery and shown up really well um, and as I said we're we're a club that develop our players um, and we, we have a squad there that we need to utilise. I'm not the guy that just sticks with the same 11 all the time and you've seen that probably due to the injury situation because the players, I have to feel like when they get the chance, um, they could show what they can do and they have an opportunity to stay in the team. And I feel that the squad's the most important thing. I keep uh, reiterating it. It's about the team. And it's about the team. And it's about the team. It's not about individuals. It's about the team. One last one there, just on the injury front. Um, Jonathan Hogg went off with his calf injury. Um, how's he getting on? Have you got any time scale on when he might be available again? Oggy's well, been assessed and he's fine. Um, he's been absolutely outstanding for uh, me since he's come through the door and played for me. He's everything I uh, admire about uh, a player. He, he shows character, he's got big determination and his performance levels were through the roof after a very lengthy layoff. 
Um, and it was just unfortunate that he felt tightness leading into the half time, especially when we were up leading against a Luton team who are uh, hovering around the top six. Um, and there was nothing in the game for me. It was very much in the balance at that point. To be honest, I felt we were probably more more on top at that moment. Um, but as I said, he'll be fine. He'll settle down leading up to this important uh, batch of games that we'll have coming up because we're full focus was on the league. We'll have to stay in the league this season. We've got to continue building on the solid performances that we've shown on the back of the World Cup break and playing with this intensity and determination that we're showing week in, week out. And as I said, it would be really nice to get clean sheets as well because we've shown that we're scoring and we've got players that are on form there in the last third at the moment as well. And with that in mind, with those important games coming up, would you be minded to rest Hog this weekend and then save yeah. him for the, the championship fixtures? Yeah, Yeah, Hoggy will be rested this weekend. OK, that's great. Um, thanks ever so much, Mark. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thanks, Catherine. Steve, we'll come to you. Add it up. Are you expecting anyone else back this weekend? Uh, no, I think it's a case of just uh, we we have uh, Matty Pearson out at the moment who who's come back and he's been training really well and he he's shown up excellent in the group but it's been a very long period that he's had off and he'll play in a bounce game which is really positive for everyone um, and then of course all all the has been training and doing really well. And it's great to see him out there. He's touching the ball and he's moving well and, and he looks very agile at the moment, which is great. Um, so he'll come back into the fold as well. And of course, we've got our two new additions, um, which is exciting for the club. Um, so it's just trying to see how uh, we we go in the next uh, week to 10 days. And we've got a very important batch of games coming up and we're full focus is on the league. However, we are very excited to play in this great cup. Um, and we know we're going to have to be at it because it's a very strong opponent that we're facing. With um, <clears throat> Ollie Turton back, Matt Lurton, and you got a, and Kane in good form over Christmas. Got a lot of competition at right back now. Yeah, I feel that um, when we've got everybody back in these areas, that we, we're going to be very strong. It's going to be very hard for teams to break us down. It's already been hard, you know. Like if you think about, we only took four points from the first uh, phase of the season. Um, since we've been in, we've had a lot of clean sheets. We've won games now. We've drew games. And we've probably felt like our performances have deserved more wins than what we have. But as I said, we are building as a club. We are in a transition period and we have to help these players develop because there's a lot of them that have stepped up from leagues below, i.e. Kasumu, Rodone, Tyree Simpson, and so on. Even the likes of Kane Kessler was playing at a lower level last season as well. So we'll have to respect that and we'll have to respect that they're developing and they're working hard. And as I said, if we continue at the rate we are in the next season to 18 months, we're going to be in a far better place for this tough period that we've went through as a group. You mentioned Tyrese there. Is he in a position to get some more minutes tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. Tyrese has been training well. He's chomping at the bit. Um, we have to respect the fact he's been out for a very long time. However, he's shown a great appetite to training and he, he's he's playing with real uh, aggression and he's just different to what we've got, you know, because of his physicality. Um, and I certainly wouldn't have liked to face him myself as a, as a number six, you know. He's a strong boy um, and he's only going to improve. And um, Florian Camberry, what, what do you feel he brings to the side? Because it's... He talked to himself about his, his link-up play and, and his work off the ball, which you've touched on yourself. Is that part of um, what you want to see in the side, that, that work? Yeah, Florian's a hard-working player. You know, he's a guy that was, from when I know him back in Germany, he's a good presser. Um, he's got a lot of power in the legs when he's up to speed. We just have to be careful with Florian as well, due to the situation that we've not had a lot of funds and... We've had to try and be creative in terms of recruitment and we're very fortunate that we've got good contacts out there in Switzerland and we've heard that Florian become available and he's probably one that we're going to need to rehab and get back to the levels that he showed at Rangers and for periods and at Sheffield Wednesday as well. And there's no doubt in that it's a step up for him as well. Um, but it's a, a step that I think he's more than capable of. 
Um, Kian Harrods, another player who's now officially registered back with you. Um, what what do you see his future being like? I think he's got a very big future, Kian. Um, he's a, he's a very exciting player. He, he's very strong in the box. He, he's got a good level of finishing. Um, he shows quality in his link up play, and he's aggressive. Um, and he's a real handful. And he's developing fine. He's, he's he's coming along at a good pace. And every day he's very focused, engaged, and he, sh he shows a good discipline to his training, which is great for the staff. Is he one who you feel like could push for a first-team place as the season progresses? Yeah, absolutely. But as I touched on, we've got to be careful. You know, We have a squad there where a lot of players have stepped up from lower leagues last season. And that's what we are as a club, because we've got to look at developing and going through this transition period. However, we know that we have to win games. We know that the level, which is in our league, is that there's a lot of teams that are very settled. There's a lot of players that have played hundreds of games in the championships. And as I said, we've got to get ourselves on that route. Um, but we have to take the rough sometimes and uh, accept that. And for me, it's very positive that the performance levels of these guys has been improving um, and they've took the step up really well. And when we've had the chance due to the bad injury situation, we've introduced young players and they've, they've uh, accommodated themselves really well and they've never let themselves down and the academy should be really proud of them for that. A couple of weeks ago, the Rotherham manager, Matt Taylor, said um, the possibility Scott High might come back to Huddersfield, but we've obviously had no news on that. What's your understanding of that situation? Yeah, as I said, Steve, I'm not speculating at the moment on uh, anything in regards to January window, our players going in or out. I just feel it's uh, more respect for the other clubs as well. Um, and we've got uh, Lee Bromby, who's the sporting director who deals with this these situations and with alongside our recruitment guys. What I would say is that Scott High is a fantastic boy. The club really means a lot to him and he, he's got Huddersfield Town in his DNA and you can never have enough of players like that in the building. Yeah, you you um, at the Luton last week, um, understandably very frustrated with particularly the nature of, of the goals that you conceded. What's the response been like from the lads this week? It's been a good response. There's been a real energy about the team this week, but what I'm trying to explain is that you can't be satisfied with just getting back-to-backs -back for the first team this season, first time this season. I'm not that coach. I'm not the coach that's going to accept that. Um, it doesn't matter to me what happened earlier on the season, like we talk about with the four points from the first phase or whatever. It's not important. What's important is that we climb the table. We're putting real pressure on the teams above where we're playing with confidence. We're not the team that's just kicking the ball long and, and ho hoping for to do things in the last third. We're shifting the ball through the lines really well. Um, we're very strong and aggressive without the ball, which has been uh, illustrated in the fact that we've had a, quite a lot of clean, sh clean sheets since we've been in. And we've just got to keep improving and building on that. And like I said, we've still got half a season to go. And it's where we're at at the end of the season, which is important to me. I think uh, we've seen the fruits of the, your, your pressing going to bear over the past few games. I think particularly the, the, the goal against Rotherham, um, Dwayne's goal, which came off a really good press from Hoggy and Jack Rodoni. Is that a feature you want to see more and more from you players? Yeah, it's something that we're relentless on in training. Um, we want to be a very aggressive team and we want to press in the right areas and we feel that um, our performance has shown that. You know, we've gave teams real problems when they've been in build-up phases. But what we have now is we have players that have shown creativity in the last third and they have to continue it and demand from themselves um, because they're the guys that have set these standards. That's all for me. Thanks for that. Best looks, man. Mark, just for, sorry, just a bit of clarification. I may have, mis I may have misheard what you said there, but um, so I was on Matt Taylor's press con uh, co conference before the Huddersfield game, and he said that Scott I had gone back to Huddersfield. That's not the case, is it? I've just said again that I'm not speculating on yeah. anything in regards to players and in and outs. I hope you guys respect me as well. I've got a tough job. I've inherited a team that had four points from the start of the season. Um, We've started winning games now. We've had many draws that we feel we could have won. Um, we're very focused on this amazing cup that we're involved in at the weekend against a really tough opponent. And as I said, that's up to Lee Bromby to deal with in the future. What I would say is that Scott High is a really good boy. 
he's a good player and of course he, he plays for Scotland as well, which is which is great. He's someone that I know and he's got the Huddersfield Town DNA in his blood. He's been here since he's 10 year old, if I'm right. Um, and the club means a lot to him. So as I said, my focus lies on this weekend's game. And I'll leave that to the guys that are in charge of making their decisions moving forward. I just wanted to check on that. Uh, and just, just with regards to, to Kane Kessler-Hayden, he obviously wasn't very involved in the first team before the World Cup. What, what has he done? How has he impressed you to get, to get back into the team and obviously perform very well? Kane was always involved, you know. He's never you know, been involved. He's always made the odd match squad and he'd come on in games down in Luton and stuff as well, which is... It's very normal for young players, you know. They try to find their consistency. And like you've touched on for Kasumi, Rodone, Ken Kessler and Betty, these players, they've, they've either been playing at a lower league last season or they're coming from youth football. And what it is is that, it's, that they're stepping up because the championship, we all know, is one of the hardest leagues in the world. It's relentless in the volume of games you play. And we have to utilise our training methodology to get these guys up to speed, which we've done. And Kane's took off, you know, it's clear to see to everyone he's going to be a fantastic wing-back. He's very flexible as well that he can play both sides. He plays off both feet um, and he's an exciting player. And we're very grateful to Aston Villa that we have him. And I'm sure they'll agree as well that we've looked after him very well, even in the period that he's been out the team. We care for the guys that are not involved in the squad because we know how quickly the situation can change in regards to injuries and so on. And what I would say about that is that the lads that have not been involved have always come in and impacted very strongly um, and it's something that we focus on. But, it, you know, in terms of his performances stepping up a level, which, they, you know, they clearly have in terms of the quality of them, was that just, do you think he benefited from that from that pause, from a bit of time to just reflect on, on his performances so far and to, to work with you, your coaching staff on, on, you know, minor details in his game? Yeah, absolutely. He's been working very hard. Every day he comes in and he's very engaged. He's a guy that plays football with a smile on his face. And, he, and what I love about him is that he expresses his talent. You know, there's some fantastic moves there in the last third. He's very defensively strong. He deals with diagonals. He could head the ball well. He's got a good spring and he's a very agile player. And I really admire and like players who are good in 1v1 situations, not only offensively, but most importantly for him defensively. And he copes with that. And he's come up against some very, very quick players in the past five games since the World Cup break. And I think he's actually burned a few of them in regards to the pace that he's shown. Um, and he's a credit to himself and his family because he's handled the disappointment of not playing regular at the start of my period. And now he's come in and he's settled really well into the start of living and he's building them. And obviously you talked earlier, I think it was to Catherine, about... Um, the examples that Matt Lowton sets, I would I would assume that him more than anyone could really learn from it. A because the two footedness of both means they can play in the same team together, but just by seeing him on the training ground as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just because you play on the left or the right doesn't mean to say you need to be a left footer. You know, if you look at the top teams in the world, I was sitting down with my assistant watching Tottenham the other night, and Perisic is a world class player. He plays left wing back. He's right footed. You know. So it's just, uh, it goes on what you're looking for from your team, how you set your side up tactically. Um, and what we're lucky is we've got players that are very flexible, especially in regards to Jack Rodoni as well. He's played in, I think, maybe four or five positions since I've been in the door. And he's very much grown as a young man, not only as a footballer, but that's what we are as a club. We have to take these players in. We have to give them the platform to build on. And... As we're doing it, we've got to go and win games because we know where we want to be in the future and it's certainly not sitting at the bottom half of the table in the championship. We want to push on and we want to go up there and compete. And when we look at the teams that have been around us, there's a real frustration from us because we feel there's been very little in the games and they've been hanging in the balance. And if we had a little bit of luck or we had a bit of, a bit of more consistency and not having the terrible injury situation we've had, going into these games with a more rounded squad, we would be very much sitting up there ourselves, you know, and we have to be careful, you know, uh, what we, we wish for. But as I said, that's never going to stop us pushing these players and demanding um, the absolute highest standards from them. And, and just with regards, I mean, you mentioned Jack Rodoni there, but it, I guess it applies to all players. Do, do you think, 
do you think young players nowadays need to sort of nail down a position or is that almost old-fashioned thinking in an era where teams are so flexible now in terms of the versatility of their players? Yeah, I think it just comes down to the modern day player, you know, because they're so athletic um, and they have so many attributes at works that they could play in many different positions, um, which is great for the team. And uh, our recruitment guys are very good at that as well and they identify that very early on. Um, and we're very lucky that we've got a good recruitment team here that look for these uh, certain players that could handle the different scenarios that they're going to face. Um, and as I said, I'm very satisfied with how our young lads are developing. And that's the most pleasing thing for me at the moment is their performance levels. However, it's not only the young players that have been improving. Like I think when everybody looks at Tom Lees at the moment, he's very much for me one of the best defenders in the league. I think Helix up there as well. And I feel that uh, Boyle, he's been different class in all aspects of his game. Um, he knows that he could have done better for the two goals that we conceded at the weekend. But these things happen, you know, and it's about finding consistency levels. And for me, he's been absolutely outstanding as well. So it's just not the young lads that are developing. It's also the experienced ones that are developing and getting better as well, which is pleasing for us as a group. <laughs> Don't worry, so give it, so give it to Henry, mate. You carry on. Uh, and just on the, on the Jonathan Hall, when we talk about Jonathan, we sort of talk about him plays in quite rightly as a as a warrior and so on, and you know the sort of person who will battle on through injuries. Injury, but... Given he's such an, an an important part of your squad, how important is it that he sort of had the maturity and the common sense about him to to come off when he felt a bit of tightness the other day? Because you know we know a, a long term injury for him would be very damaging to your squad? Listen, it's experience. You know, he's got uh, a very, very big, uh, a very large wealth of experience in all the leagues. He's a winner. He's got big winner mentality. And he realised that his casts were tight. Um, listen, he's not the guy that would come and tell you that he's needing a rest. That's the polar opposite of what Hoggy's about. Um, he doesn't know how to play half-cut in training. Everything's full throttle. And that's why I admire him so much. And I'm very, very privileged that I've got him here. Um, and we've all seen from his performances when he's been in the team in the last period of games, having come on at Sheffield United, the levels have upped and it's all down to him, you know, and his intensity and the way he drives others around the bottom as well. And we just need to make sure that we look after him nice and carefully, pushing towards the end of the season. And with him in the team, I'm sure we're going to build alongside the likes of Matty Pearson coming back, which is a massive positive. Um, unfortunately, we've lost Danny Ward due to an injury. Um, he's got a hamstring injury, which is really disappointing. Um, and Lee Nichols has also got uh, a little bit of a shoulder knock that he's got to take care of this weekend. But well, we, what I would say with our young goalkeeper, Nick, is that he done excellent in a bounce game against Burnley, who are sitting top of the league. And already had in my head that I would like to start him this weekend as well to give him the chance to show what he can do. And I feel it's a big uh, day for him and his family as well to go up there against a, a very good opposition in Preston. Is there, is there a time frame on Danny's, Danny Ward's recovery? Uh, there's no time frame at the moment, but it looks like it's going to be a lengthy period he's out, which is very unfortunate. Um, Danny's kind of been in and out. He's training over the Christmas period. He had a, a knock on his back, um, which we, we all discussed. And it's just unfortunately, it's led to a hamstring injury now. And I'm just hoping that he's going to be back as soon as possible because we all know how, how important a fit Danny Ward is to this club. Um, but as I said, it's been important that we've got Matty Pearson playing minutes in the a bounce game today, which is great. And Ollie Turton also been involved in the training and, and getting up to speed as quick as we can get him back. I'll give us a more rounded squad moving forward. And uh, just finally, is is Lee's one that you just have to manage, or is it more serious than that? Yeah, it's no serious. You know, he, he he's been there for a scan, and the medical guys have assessed it, and uh, he's got a little bit of irritation there in his shoulder, um, which will settle down now. You know, moving towards this next batch of games. But as I said, Nick's very much a guy that I would like to give the chance to at the weekend. Um, He's done well in the bounce games that he's played, especially against Burnley and Olympiacos, which couldn't have been any harder tests with the quality of offensive players they've got. Uh, and and I feel that um, 
It's a very big day for the young man. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Keith. Thanks. Thanks. Cheers, everyone. Catherine.